Wilbert Vere Audrey, probably now best known simply as Reverend Audrey, was born in Ampfield, Hampshire on the 15th of June 1911. The son of an Anglican clergyman, his somewhat unusual first name and amalgamation of his uncle's names William and Herbert, grew up to be the author of the world famous railway series of stories for children, best known for featuring a certain blue tank engine. In the early years of his life, a series of house moves within Wiltshire culminated in a young Wilbert growing up only a stone's throw from the western portal of the famous Box Tunnel on the Great Western Railway's main route from London to the West Country. The development of a passion for all things rail related seemed inevitable, the passing trains capturing the heart and mind of this future doyen of the railway world. As a child he would lie awake listening to the sounds of banking engines working hard where one locomotive routinely helps another by pushing a heavy train uphill on the 1 in 100 gradient near his home. Like so many railway enthusiasts, he imagined them talking to each other, which led him to believe that locomotives had distinct personalities. This particular scenario no doubt providing inspiration for the story of Edward helping Gordon's train uphill in the very first book of the railway series the Three Railway Engines, published in May 1945. The stories themselves came about in the form of spoken word as an amusement for Wilbert's then three-year-old son Christopher, who was confined to bed with measles. By his own admission, Wilbert placed no value whatsoever on his stories except for family use, and literally would laugh at his wife's insistence that they were worthy of publication although at the time she had no idea as to how this might be achieved. In the end, a distant cousin of Wilbert's mother, who was a literary agent, eventually interested one Edmund Ward, a Leicester-based fine art printer who was at the time on a quest to make good the wartime shortage of good quality children's literature, and the three railway engines came out in May 1945. Interestingly, a shortage of paper resulted in the smaller size and format of books still in use today. It's also interesting to note, whilst nowadays the most famous part of the franchise, Thomas himself did not feature in that first book, only appearing in the eponymous second book published nearly a year later in March 1946. Along with his golden rules of consistency, brevity, careful wording and fluency, Wilbert believed that accuracy was of paramount importance when writing for children. Indeed, his son was always quick to point out errors and inconsistencies in his storytelling, and the Reverend often received indignant letters from young children demanding to know why a particular detail was incorrect. Taking inspiration for his stories from real life, Wilbert would collect and compile incidents and accidents from professional railwomen and journals such as the Railway Gazette. In fact, never a fan of nationalisation, he bemoaned British Railways losing the capacity to laugh at itself when a series of the Gazette called The Scrap Heap, a treasure trove of odd and amusing railway incidents, was discontinued. The Talithlin Railways link with the Reverend Audrey and the Thomas phenomenon dates back to 1951 when Wilbert joined the TRPS as one of its earliest members, membership number 79 in fact. He first visited the TR in 1952, volunteering in roles such as guard, booking clerk and plate layer. His experience informed his Scarlowy railway stories, starting with Four Little Engines, published in 1955. His links with the world's first preserved railway extended throughout his life. The world of railways has, for some reason, always enjoyed strong links with the clergy. Indeed, Wilbert's friend the Reverend Teddy Boston, he of Cade Be Light Railway fame, and Wilbert came to be known affectionately as the fat and thin clergyman respectively, and in these guises came to feature in various railway and book cameos. Whilst best remembered for his magnum opus The Railway Series, Audrey also wrote other titles. Belinda the Beetle was published in 1958, a children's book about the eponymous car, along with the follow-up Belinda Beats the Band in 1961. And, in association with his younger brother George, he co-authored The Island of Sodor, Its People, History and Railways, which was published in 1987. 
In terms of non-fiction, he was responsible for the Birmingham and Gloucester Railway in 1987, another joint authorship, this time with PJ Long, and Our Child Begins to Pray, A Parent's Guide, a religious text published in 1951. Wilbert continued to write until 1972, by which time he had 26 books in the Railway series to his credit. From 1983, his son Christopher took over, adding another 16 titles, the last of which, Thomas and His Friends, being published in 2011, appropriately in the year of what would have been his father's centenary. The Reverend received an OBE in the Queen's 1996 New Year's Honours List, but by this time his health was failing and unfortunately he was unable to collect the award in person. He passed away peacefully in his sleep on the 21st of March 1997 at the age of 85. Various memorials commemorate his life including the naming of at least two locomotives, LNER class 91, 91124 and the Dean Forrest Hunslet 060 saddle tank Wilbert. But it seems appropriate that his abiding memorial will always be the little blue tank engine that had such a global impact, not only on generations past, but also of the present and doubtless the future.